<clears throat> Hi, good afternoon to everybody. I hope the slide is visible. Please, please confirm that. <clears throat> Uh, I didn't. I didn't hear. Can can somebody please confirm whether uh, I'm audible and the slide is visible? <clears throat> yes, sir. The slide is visible. Yeah. You're on. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll, we'll continue from <clears throat> what we have been discussing. <clears throat> the hypersonic equivalence principle, in which based on the similar mathematical similarity of the equations it's argued that or it is observed that the steady hypersonic flow over a slender body is equivalent to an unsteady flow in one less space dimension steady hypersonic flow over a slender body slenderness is an assumption which has to be still carried forward the nose can be blunt but the body has to be slender. That is, the toe has to be uh, small. D by L has to be uh, very small. Uh, under those conditions, when we look at the equations with the hypersonic approximation, we see that mathematically the equations are similar or the 2D steady equations are similar to uh, 1D unsteady equations under the same set of assumptions. So that points out that there can be, the solutions can be similar between the two. And the physical arguments where we we consider, uh, I guess I explained this, I'll just, yeah. When we consider a body in the YZ plane on the right hand side, YZ plane on the right hand side, and if you consider a cylindrical wave, a cylindrical piston, radial piston, as they call it, as they call it. Uh, so if you consider a cylindrical, or rather um, a circular wave, a radial wave that is emanating from the center, from the origin, and with time when it is growing, you can equate that to the time-wise evolution of the shock over a body, a pointed body as shown on the left-hand side. That is, <clears throat> when we consider the shock propagation as it is shown here, this is the transient, that or a transient or unsteady, let's assume 1D propagation. 1D because it's just in the radial direction. As opposed to this, this is the steady state. That is, for each uh, given time, we are just looking at what happens in the uh, in the x y direction. So here we have a y z direction, a y z plane in which we are considering a radial moment, which is a one dimensional moment, and we are observing it as a function of time because we know that the cylindrical wave is emanating and it's going in the uh, the yeah the radial uh, it's proceeding in the radial direction and equivalent to that on the 2d on the 2d plane it can be mapped to the the evolution of a, a shock evolution of the shock flow field around a pointed body as shown there now please look at on the left hand side uh, left hand side which i marked as the uh, steady state what we are trying to say is that for any given t, say t1 or t2 or t3, I can say that this in from this picture, I can say that the body has reached, say, x1 or the nose of the body has reached a distance x1 or x2 or x3 as the time may be. And at that time, I can say that for a given location, this is the shock pattern or for a given point, this is the static pressure. So 
this will correspond. So that is on the 2D plane. And I'm just looking at one a given time. So we, we, are, we are not way worried about the time waste variation. But we just make sure that we are looking at in the uh, looking at uh, in the x y plane. So the the uh, at a given location, the static pressure or the evolution of it can be equator or can be uh, equivalent to the the transient propagation in the y z plane. Because if you were to look from the side or from the y z plane, what you would see is a shock wave growing in the radial direction. Whereas in the in the 2D plane, corresponding to any location x, I can find out that the velocity using the time wise or so I, I correct myself for corresponding to any time t, I can find the distance traveled x as v infinity into t, right? The displacement t, x is equal to v infinity into t. So uh, if I know the the time that I have to resolve, then that I can I can find out the pressure distribution from this x y plane without bothering about uh, without without bothering about the unsteady nature of the problem. For that given time, I can find out what is the pressure. Whereas on the y z plane, with respect to time, with respect to time, I can know how it is proceeding, and then I can map the uh, I can map them together in such a way that now I'm going to read. So based on this description, again, I'm just going to read out the sentence below. The unsteady flow in the YZ plane, the unsteady flow in the YZ plane, that is the, the right-hand side image, at various time intervals, T1, T2, T3, et cetera, gives the corresponding steady flow results in the YZ, YZ planes located at various corresponding values of x1, x2, x3, etc., where x is equal to v infinity into t. So for different values of x, well, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, different values of x, which are given by different values of t, I can get the corresponding values from the z plane, y z plane. So this is a sort of physical interpretation where we see that the mathematical similarity can be uh, is somewhat explained based on the, uh, the comparative physics in the two frames of consideration, the two frames of consideration. So we, we see that not only that the mathematically the equations are similar, uh, we can sort of physically see that one can be, uh, one can be uh, corresponding to the other solution. Now, based on these two observations, the next question is why? Or what is the use of it? So before I go to that, I just uh, I've just put them together here, uh, just for uh, just for uh, a conclusive uh, statement of it. That is, the steady state hypersonic flow over a body can be constructed from an high unsteady flow in one less space direction dimension. I, I want to highlight that the steady hypersonic flow. It, this is only applicable to hypersonic flow because the mathematical similarity that we uh, find is only subject to hypersonic and slender applications, uh, slender assumptions. So uh, uh, that's why the, the method is so specific to hypersonic flows. And uh, So for steady hypersonic flow, solution can be constructed from an unsteady flow in one less space dimension. And uh, the, the match, in a, in a physical sense, the match or the mapping between the two, the steady 1D and, uh, uh, sorry, steady 2D and uh, unsteady 1D is what is there shown in this schematics uh, progressively from the uh, top to the bottom. The progression of the radial waves in the radial, in the 2D, in the uh, transient plane versus the progression of the body in the 2D plane in the left hand side, in the steady uh, reference frame in the left hand side. So this is the mapping that we are talking about, uh, or this is the equivalence that we are talking about in terms of hypersonic equivalence. Now the question is why, why or not why, why are we concerned about it or how is this useful? Uh, I guess I mentioned it in the previous class. The utility of this approach comes because for the unsteady case, unsteady radial propagation of pressure waves. I, I repeat that, 
for unsteady radial propagation of waves in a given plane there are data available in terms of experimental as well as mostly uh, theoretical data so there are theoretical formulations which can solve for transient propagation of a wave in one dimension in one direction okay so when if the data is available then for a corresponding 2d problem for 2d hypersonic problem i can make use of that data i can make use of that solution so that i can try to get solution for the the problem at interest which is a slender body with a blunt nose in hypersonic flow a slender body with a blunt nose in hypersonic flow which is quite a common application for um, uh, for hypersonic flows so if i have if i can map these if i can relate these two theoretically then i can get a solution which i can make use of for the slender body analysis and that's uh, the physical uh, the pressure distribution over a slender and uh, that's the interest or that's why we are concerned so much about this particular theory okay now how is that done our demonstration is uh, what we are trying to do here based on a, on uh, results for a blast wave what is a blast wave uh, in the in, for initially i had shown the propagation of waves uh, both some uh, um, experimental photographs as well as some numerical simulations so please recall that when we say pressure wave or uh, in this context what we mean is waves which are moving at high velocity in a radial direction so pressure may be as a result of an explosion at a point you have a drastic uh, you have a rapid release of energy at a given point like an explosion and the waves which are created by the explosion they they propagate in the radial direction okay so that's why basically that's what is meant by a blast wave so when you say a cylindrical blast wave you are considering a wave say for example normal to the plane uh, the cylindric cylinder the axis of the cylinder could be normal to the plane whereas the cross section should be in the plane of the say monitor or the whatever you are seeing it so that the propagation can be in the radial direction but the wave as such could be a cylindrical wave which can uh, move so it's a cylindrical so when you consider that kind of a cylindrical blast wave there are theoretical solutions which give the static pressure near the center again please try to visualize the wave you have a central uh, you have a uh, an explosion which is a, uh, a radial wave created by an explosion you can visualize the center of explosion you can, and if you have you can visualize what is going to be the pressure at the center as a function of time as a function of time because we are considering it as a transient phenomena it is a transient phenomena so uh, if i know the energy of explosion and if i know the density of the gas in the free stream uh, value of it then i can calculate static pressure near the center i repeat if i know the energy release in the explosion and if i rate of that actually and if i know the uh, density of the gas then i can calculate the static pressure near the center as a function of time uh, please look at this relation uh, this is this is taken from blast wave theories blast wave uh, formulation of blast wave theories we don't we are not concerned about the derivation of it we just have this relation which relates static pressure near the center of the wave uh, as a function of time t is time uh, when the energy of the explosion e is given and the free stream velocities are given and of course a constant which is basically a function of gamma of the gas cp by cv of the gas so if we know that then these parameter then we can calculate the static pressure uh, that that would result close to the center of explosion in the case of a, an energy release rapid energy release in an in uh, in any gas so making use of this so uh, where are we now we we have we have some solution for the uh, to for the 1d uh, transient phenomena whereas we are actually interested in a 2d phenomena which is the movement of a blunt body or other which is hypersonic flow past a 
uh, blunt nosed body, a slender body with a blunt nose. And we, but we have the transient solution for the corresponding 1D phenomena, 1D transient phenomena. So now the, the attempt is how to relate them. And that is not too complex because uh, the energy release, you can relate that if you consider um, an area over which that is being released, then you can relate that easily to the work. Energy basically uh, is equivalent to work. And then if you consider it over a given uh, length, then the shock wave, uh, the energy that we can, uh, we can consider, we can consider that to be uh, moving in the, in the radial direction. Now, our interest is on the pressure distribution. Pressure distribution, which actually can be related to the drag or vice versa. Drag can be attributed to the pressure distribution. Now, what is drag? It's a force. The force acting on the surface. Uh, please note, uh, I'll try to repeat this. Our, we have solution for this. The transient phenomena, which is a 1D, a 1D propagation in the in the uh, temporal plane that is uh, the energy released in the blast moving in the radial direction we know how the pressure distribution is going our interest is in mapping it to this case this is where we want to find out because we have hypersonic flow faster blunt base uh, blunt nosed body with a slender shape so uh, what we are interested is in finding it finding out the pressure distribution, the CD, et cetera, CP, uh, basically, CP, the drag force, the pressure distribution along the, the surface of the body. Okay, so the question is, how are we going to relate these two? We know the pressure, static pressure near the center from this relation, and that's the relation that we have just discussed here, K1 rho infinity by rho infinity, et cetera. Now, what we need to find out here is the, the resulting drag or the drag coefficient. So we, we observe that, so if we consider a force, drag force, then D into DX, the force into distance can be equated to the work done and the energy, work done is equivalent to the energy, right? So if I am considering it over a DX, then that is the uh, unit energy that is uh, released, or rather uh, incremental energy that is, uh, uh, that is associated with that force working over that per distance, so DE. Now, if you are actually considering it over a unit length, instead of DX, if I just consider a unit length, then that D, D into one is equal to E. So drag operating over a unit length is, so force into distance, drag D, force into distance, unit distance, is equal to work done or the, which is equivalent to energy. So the energy can be, the magnitude of it for a unit distance can be equated to drag. Uh, of course, the units are different, but one has the, uh, but uh, as long as we are restricting, it, restricting our attention to a unit length, we can consider D is equal to E with the corresponding units on either side. So, uh, which in terms says that the, the, the drag can be equated in magnitude to the energy release per unit length. Energy release per unit length can be equated to drag. Okay, so we uh, so we have two things now. We have the uh, static pressure distribution that is coming from the solution, blast wave theory, the blast wave formulation, transient solution. We have not seen how it comes, but there are theory theories which formulates how the static pressure can be equated. In the, in the formation of a blast wave, transient, and so with, as a function of time. And on the other hand, we have this relation, E can be equated to D as long as we are considering a unit length. And of course, we know it, uh, it's related to CD, half rho V squared CD by the usual uh, definition for drag that multiplied by the projected area, pi D squared by four. So D is equal to half rho V squared CD, pi D squared by four, and D is related to E, and here we have a relation between E and the static pressure. So uh, now D itself, that is the energy itself, we can relate that, or, or on this side we have CD, 
it is related to this one and where here you have pressure and the combining these two we can get a relation by eliminating v infinity and replacing it by m because we have rho also there so in introducing mac number we can get a relation or a relation has been derived which gives p by p infinity that is the static pressure distribution normalized by the free stream pressure can be equated as 0.0681 m infinity it's a non dimensional equation so we don't have to worry about the dimension so 0.0681 a constant m infinity squared square root of cd divided by x by d x by d what does it mean the pressure the p that i am getting is as a function of x so uh, keep in mind the body of interest is a slender body with a blunt nose and uh, what we are we are talking about a pressure distribution along the distance so which means that i can have a, um, a long x when x is varying i can have a static pressure distribution as a function of x for a given value cd cd is a property of the uh, this one we can we are, depending on the shape of the body we can have the value for cd so p by p infinity is equal to 0.0681 m infinity square square root of cd by x by d can give us the static pressure distribution and p by p infinity as soon as we have p, b, p by p infinity we can convert that in easily into cp and so a further uh, more simplified solution actually simplification is only in terms of introducing cp instead of p by p infinity uh, so cp can be equated as sorry uh, cp can be equated as 0.096 cd to power of half divided by x by d 0.096 cd to power of half divided by x by d so what are we saying if i have a blunt body and if i have i repeat if i have a blunt body in such a way that it has a blunt edge but it has a slender shape and if i am considering hypersonic flow past it then the pressure distribution can be calculated as uh, as a function of cd to power of half multiplied by 0.096 divided by x by d so along the body so if i if i consider x along the body along the length of the body i can plot the cp value if i know cd and if i obviously know the diameter or the the transverse direction dimension of the body so this is what this uh, important and very simple relation is a result of the identification of my hypersonic my equivalence between the two cases and making use of the blast flow um, sorry the blast wave results to map the corresponding hypersonic body um, static pressure distribution Uh, this is called the mathematical uh, sorry the hypersonic equivalence which is based on mathematical equivalence between the two equations and blast wave theory uh, this particular relation is based on the blast wave theory formulation i pause here before we look at the limitations applications of it etc but any any anything to be clarified so far okay Let, let's look at the limitations of the approach uh, though i did not keep uh, repeating the assumptions uh, please keep in mind that all the assumptions like uh, 1d uh, sorry uh, the invisible flow and this one etc are uh, are implicit in the uh, analysis and uh, hypersonic body and uh, sorry it's only for hypersonic flows and it's also for slender bodies in addition to that we are actually making use of uh, the blast wave solution actually they are quite old actually they, they call it classical blast wave solutions uh, they existed even before um, we started worrying worrying about uh, hypersonic flows etc because the, i guess the derivation for those those were based on uh, other engineering requirements anyway probably related to explosions themselves anyway Uh, so those theories uh, that uh, so all the assumptions or the uh, simplifications which are uh, which are 
implicit to that theory are applicable here and are are, are constra constraints to the applicability of this theory and um, we know that in in real in reality is not like an explosion when you have an a hypersonic body moving though we map it in terms of a radially moving so is fundamentally different so uh, that is also a limitation of the approach uh, but at the um, on the other side the physical reasoning and the analogy validity of the analogy actually makes it useful uh, as a as a good uh, tool for estimating the static pressure distribution along bodies of uh, interest i'll i'll show you some uh, results it's very actually interesting <clears throat> uh this is um, uh, the <clears throat> uh, yeah um, the, the space shuttle kind of bodies in fact all of them um, may not be pertaining to the same dimensions but of similar uh, uh, shape and similar dimensions uh, so uh, this theory the the uh, hypersonic equivalence has been applied to uh, space shuttle type of bodies Uh, i guess these solutions are for is ts3 uh, the many of these graphs that i am going to plot show here are taken from my paper i have this uh, aaa paper uh, fairly old uh, but it's an it's an analysis of actually that paper is based on cfd analysis but the the pictures are taken from that though the results pertain to a different uh, study Uh, i am i use this uh, paper just to have that configuration and the different uh, angles of attack etc uh, in the in fact in that uh, a, a, a paper 8371798 uh, what they have done is they have done the hypersonic flow calculations based on cfd experimental or in flight data etc uh, what we are we are not we are not talking about cfd simulations here we are talking about uh calculations based on the the formulation that we have just seen based on um, equivalence uh, you know, anderson has given this uh, this graph which is based on the solution uh, the solution of what we have just seen so uh this graph is actually uh, based on the calculations for this shape sts3 if i remember correctly uh i guess they have for sts5 also uh, uh the similar calculations so oh, what are we what are we gaining here you have the body with different angles of attack that is the space shuttle with different angles of attack at high mach numbers uh, mach numbers well in excess of 6 7 8 etc uh, uh, much uh, higher range as well and at uh, different angles of attack and Uh, the cp distribution cp on the x axis y axis here is shown as a function of x by l x by l please remember the equation uh, i'm sorry so so cp is equal to 0.026 uh, cd to of half divided by x by d <clears throat> here it is just normalized by x by l now uh, uh, if you look at this uh, the uh, the qual will come to the quality of the or the nature of the variation uh, but what we have is the variation of cd and uh, in the relation we have <clears throat> uh, the, the the value of cd for this particular geometry you can see that it's more like a uh, um, a hemisphere so cd in most of these calculations are taken as one uh, because of for a hemisphere it can be approximated to one so uh, that cd value is substituted as one uh, i'm sorry what what is what what you have here is the cp not cd uh, cp that as we get from the uh, relation so uh, cp is plotted here that basically the static pressure distribution is plotted here and uh, for it can be calculated for different angles of attack etc and uh, if you look at these graphs they are actually comparisons with uh, in flight data so whatever is taken for sts3 and 
computed uh, are in, compared with those uh, from the theory this uh, 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 simplified uh, mathematical uh, hypersonic equivalence theory uh, and what you see here as two for two different values of gamma etc are from the paper that i mentioned because this is based on uh, cfd analysis in which they have done simulations for different values of gamma etc we are not talking about that our comparison is only between the equivalence theory and the um, sorry and the in flight data and it it has been uh, shown to be surprisingly very close actually uh, the what you get from the equation say uh, i guess that comparison is uh, very obvious from what uh, what is given in anderson's text this is based on the equation that we have just seen for cp in terms of cd and x by l so uh, this graph that the solid graph is based on the equation whereas these two are for two different um, uh, vehicles based on sts and sts5 uh, sts3 and 5 based on actual in flight data and see how how close they are and considering all the assumptions and considering the constraints valid this one etc of the uh, the theoretical argument that we are we are making uh, they are very close and and very uh, useful also so that uh, you can get a, a good very easily you can get a uh, an estimate of how the pressure variation is going to be and how it is going to be dependent on the uh, on the angle of attack in fact though i have not shown that here there is a uh, what all these relations what i have written here corresponds to alpha equals 0 alpha equals uh, 0 that is for uh, uh, zero angle of attack uh, if you add to this uh a per um, um value based on uh, newton's uh, theory or uh, two, two sin squared alpha uh, you will get uh, you can incorporate the impact of uh, alpha as well so it's quite uh, straightforward to uh, incorporate the uh, influence of alpha into this relation so uh, so that's how it is it is i mean calculated for different angles of attack as, as well uh, yeah i guess so for these are shown for different values so far find so these uh, some of them i have taken from that paper <clears throat> okay, i'm i'm trying to get some more data on this uh, for different angles or uh, different mac numbers uh, but please note that mac number does not show show up in the relation and that that is in line with all the mac number independence etc that we have discussed so far Uh, uh but then in flight data will it will be given for different mac numbers so i'm i'm trying to get some more data from this uh, paper or related studies and i'll i'll give it to you as uh, uh, as the possible as an assignment soon uh, so that you can do some calculations and comparisons so that you get a a, a more hands on feel of uh, how good the comparison is or or what are the benefits that we get from the application of this i guess i will stop here any any for any questions uh, i can take <clears throat> if i'm able to uh, get sufficient data i'll i'll present that again to you that or rather i'll i'll uh, give the um, relevant information i'll i'll formulate it as uh, uh, different tasks where you can actually do it and present the data as we follow for the assignments in this course uh, i will try to do that at earliest any questions or any <clears throat> anything to be clarified further uh hopefully if i am able to give this one that and uh, i guess when you work on it you will get uh, more insight to at least the utility of the method i believe but it this is considered to be uh, i i uh, we we still have papers coming on this uh, subject so uh, and uh, people are sort of uh, very uh, even 
no it's say when 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 this were more these were being considered more for design etc cfd was not so much advanced uh, but even now when we have cfd tools to do this uh, this method is considered to be one of the most powerful methods to uh, applications like this uh, most powerful as well less uh, easiest methods for uh, computations like this where you can quickly get an estimate of the pressure distribution different for different configurations which can be used to refine the design further so often in literature this is highlighted as uh, this is one of the most powerful and uh, quickest method for methods for pressure estimation in uh, hypersonic flows Okay, then thank you. If you don't have questions, we'll stop here now. Thanks and bye to all of you.